one. And with that, I'm going to uh, uh, try to get this thing started. Uh, yesterday, we had a meeting. We have a discussion group, a spiritist discussion group. And there was a young man there. He's very new to the uh, Spiritist Society. And uh, I had mentioned the Wizard of Is, which is the name of my spirit. That, that being that's inside of me. And uh, I was trying to explain uh, who I was. And uh, he was a little confused. He, he wanted to know if I was channeling a, uh, uh, a spirit. You know? And I, I made it clear to him that the Wizard of Is is my spirit. And uh, I really rely on him. And I recommended my book to him because and if he read the introduction, then he would know what our relationship was. And the introduction is one page, and if you don't mind, I'm going to read it to you. Stanley is speaking. That's, that's Stanley, me, you know. And I said, Wizard, I'm supposed to write an introduction to this book, and frankly, I don't have a clue as to where to begin. As usual, I need your help and guidance. And this is the format of the book. Stanley asks the questions. He has nothing but questions. And the wizard is the one who answers. And the wizard answers. He, Those uh, who will be reading these words are my children, just as you are. And it is only fitting that I introduce myself to them by dictating the words that you will write. To the readers of this book, I want to say both thank you and congratulations. I am grateful to you for completing me by your hearing and accepting my words as written through my scribe and channel. That's me. I congratulate you on your ascension to a higher level of understanding. You have opened your heart to the gifts of love, peace, and joy. You can now get a glimpse of the heaven that awaits you as you continue on this path of true learning, learning the truth of who you are. I have included a glossary of terms as I use them to facilitate your journey through these pages. You will find that my answers to the intensely personal questions asked of me by the channel will hold the answer to many of the problems you yourself have. Although the problems may vary from individual to individual, the one answer remains the same. I am, meaning the wizard, I am the answer to all problems. This book will help you find me in your own heart. So read on and enjoy. So in any case, Hopefully tonight the wizard is going to be talking to you and not Stanley. He's going to answer questions. And we have uh, picked some questions out that, uh, to see how they... Uh, well, actually, we want to see if this uh, wizard of his and how he relates to spiritism. And I just want to mention briefly that I, I, spiritism is new to me. It's five five months ago or something that I... I finally got introduced to it, and I, I have been a, uh, a spiritual searcher, a spiritualist, a spiritualist searcher, like my whole life. In fact, uh, I, I even became a ordained rabbi, you know, and I'm a teacher, teacher of, uh, uh, of things spiritual, teacher of God. I don't practice that because, to me, a religion is something that I try to avoid. Spirituality, yes. Religion, no. And that's, that's where I am at this point in my life and probably will be forever. But just what spiritualism is and what its relationship is to spiritism, hopefully I'll be able to explain that this evening. In any case, um, let, me, let me start with a story, okay? I recently uh, officiated at the wedding of my youngest daughter, Lauren. Well, Lauren had just got married, but when she was six years old, and I will never forget this, 
It was Hanukkah time. This is the time, the Festival of Lights. And uh, they, she's the, pro, uh, the daughter of a mixed marriage. And I was, it felt it come upon me to explain to my granddaughter, just uh, as her Jewish grandpa, just uh, what the Festival of Lights was all about. And I tried to explain to her, yeah, the, the lights lasted much longer than they should have, uh, and, uh, and we, we celebrate that. And, and I said, but what it's really all about is the Jewish people and light. There is a light inside of us that never goes out. And Lauren says, oh, Grandpa, she's six years old. She says, Grandpa, you mean God. Oh, boy, and I'm trying to teach her. <laughs> In any case, uh, this is the Passover right now. And uh, there was, I was explaining, Jeanette, I was explaining to Jim just what uh, the, the burning bush was all about. The burning bush is a story from Exodus uh, where Moses uh, is tilling the, uh, the land for his, for his uh, intended father-in-law and he suddenly sees this bush and it's on fire. And the peculiar thing was, he's just he's seen a bush on fire, that it, the fire was not consuming the bush. And he was just startled by this. This is, this is really, really strange. So the bush started to talk to him. And the bush told him, I am Yahweh, the Lord thy God, and he gave him instructions. And it's a really beautiful and very important story because the light that the fire that doesn't consume us, that is that spirit that's inside of us. And uh, well, when we can contact that spirit and realize that is not who we are, that who we think we are uh, is not who we are. That light, that fire, that fire in our belly, that, 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 that is who we are. And that is our spirit. And it, and when you're fortunate enough to realize that that spirit is who you are and you're not your personality, you are not, you're not the things you have and so on. But, the, but to have that is a, is a wonderful thing. I discovered that spirit inside of me and I, I've, been, I've been talking to it for as long as I can remember. And the beautiful thing about it is I have a wonderful relationship with that, with that fire inside of me. And, I call him the wizard of is, and he is who I, actually not who I am, but who I would like to be. He is my potential. He is that Holy Spirit, and that Holy Spirit is inside of every one of us. I mean, Christ said he's going to send us a, uh, a comforter, that Holy Spirit, when you get to realize that the Holy Spirit is who you are, not who you think you are, but to be able to have that that Holy Spirit as, as the answer to your problems. And that is just so great. Anyway, enough about uh, the Wizard of Is and Stanley. And uh, perhaps uh, uh, Yonar, Yonar last week did a wonderful uh, lecture on Spiritism. And she asked if I would, uh, even though I'm new to it, if I would uh, be able to talk about just what I have learned in the few months that I uh, that I've been practicing, and I have been reading uh, voluminously. <laughs> anyway, can I have the first slide? Absolutely. Reincarnation uh, is nature's method of evolution. You got a question? Yes. Oh, okay. Good. I do. On topic, reincarnation is nature's method of evolution. Would evolution take place if reincarnation didn't exist? In other words, is reincarnation a vital part of evolution? Well, the Spiritist doctrine, as far as I'm concerned, so it gives us the purpose of our lives, you know, the reason that we do reincarnate, that, that our spirit does reincarnate, is to purify it. And, uh, and as, as humanity uh, starts to purify its spirit and raises its level of consciousness, then that is the purpose. That's why we're here, to purify that spirit. And uh, man evolves as his spirit becomes purified. Perhaps one day it becomes 
perfectly uh, pure, the perfect pure spirit. Occasionally somebody comes along who is that, and I'm certainly not the one, but certainly, but certainly Jesus was. Anyway, um, that is, uh, that, 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 that's my answer to that. That, that uh, this seems to be nature's way of, uh, of purifying our spirit. So we come back here each time and we keep advancing higher and higher on the, uh, uh, <coughs> on the spiritual level. Mm-hmm. Okay, got another one? Yes. On a skepticism, believe, experience, knowledge, these are very important words. Are you suggesting a journey here? Uh, I, am I suggesting what? A journey. A journey. It is a journey. This is what we're on. We're on that journey from disbelief. You know, then it gets to a point. That if you take it as a uh, a hierarchy of uh, uh, of belief, you go from disbelief to uh, criticism. And that's, that's very common. In fact, we were discussing criticism uh, uh, in the uh, meeting yesterday. Uh, criticism, uh, it, it could be nasty, you know? Disbelief and criticism. But, you know, when you get a little bit higher, you know, you've read a little bit, and there, there seems to be some evidence to bear out that uh, spiritism is, really tri- is, really, is real, that that spirit is real, and perhaps... Uh, and, and reincarnation is a, is a for real uh, experience. So on that level, where ske- skepticism is a little higher on the uh, on that scale. And uh, you, the next one, uh, well, you know, you, you keep reading, and uh, you, nobody has any really good answers. And after a while, you start to believe it. You know. Well, you know, it, it fits. It, it seems like a better answer than anybody ever had. You know, spiritism, that the fact that we, that our spirits, uh, uh, <coughs> you don't die and, uh, and it, it disappears. No, that spirit goes on living. And, and spiritism, the doctrine, the, uh, as, as is explained in uh, Kardec's work, and that spirit uh, is immortal. Well, you can believe that it's immortal, but spiritism, with the evidence that, that they have now, and uh, if you really pursue it and go beyond being skeptical about it, and it just seems to make such very good sense. And, and so it goes, it becomes, this becomes your belief. Well, belief is, is great, you know. You can live your life with your beliefs. I've I've had that, you know. I believed, uh, goodness sakes. I mean, I, I my whole life has been about believing that 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 spirit that inside of me is indeed who I am, and that spirit is connected to uh, to the. Uh, but and, and when that Holy Spirit is really connected to to God, answers the question, "Who is God?" And well, I you can't answer the question, but I certainly feel that spirit inside of me and knowing that well the watchword of our faith in Judaism is that hero Israel the Lord our God the Lord is one doesn't say there's one God it says the Lord is one we're all one and that 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 Holy Spirit is connected and it's connected to each other and, and and to the source well you can believe this and you can spend your whole life believing it but suddenly, which is what has happened to me now, I suddenly realize that there's something beyond belief. And that's the experience. Will you actually experience this? I had a teacher and uh, once asked him, uh, he's a very wise man and he's very sensitive and he was my guru, as a matter of fact, and asked him, uh, what happens after I die? He says, well, after you die, you'll certainly find out. So go and die. <laughs> I said, thanks a lot. You know, I'm not ready to do that. But to be able to have the experience that spiritism uh, has been able to demonstrate that that spirit 
is around us, and it is a force, it's a physical force in nature that, that is so far beyond our ability to explain scientifically, but it is there at the present time. We don't know what the, uh, we know what it does, but we just don't know what it is. But we can, again, experience it. And I do experience, let me, let me give you an example. I had a, uh, I, I had an experience old, at least 25, 30 years ago. I think I told this story last time I was here, and I don't know why, but I'll repeat it. Uh, I went out to dinner with my group of my friends, and we were going to go to the opera, and we went to, there was a, a wonderful restaurant in New York near Lincoln Center called uh, the, the, the Ginger Man. and. Well, I, I had a couple of glasses of wine, and I had some fish, and I, I started to feel very queasy. And I excused myself at dinner, and went to the men's room, and thought I was going to be able to heave. And I got very dizzy, and I fell. I, I just totally lost control. I passed out. Well, this is in the stall in the bathroom, and... Um, while I'm passed out, apparently, I had an experience. And it was a amazing experience. I died. You know, it, it was always in that I was dreaming. I died. And when I uh, suddenly saw I was in a room, and I, to this day I remember it, it was so vivid, and there were two young people there who were quite surprised to see me. They were, they were just, you know, look who's here. You know. And then a young man walked in, nice looking young man, and reminded me of Jimmy Fallon, I don't know why. But. <laughs> and uh, I, I said to him, I'm not supposed to be here. This, I, I'm not supposed to be here. This is a, this is a mistake, I'm not supposed to, I'm, I'm not ready for this. And he looked at me like I was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I <laughs> so kept repeating, I'm not supposed to be here. Finally, he got the message that I really meant it. And he uh, turned around, he walked out of the room, and when he came back in, he nodded his head and said, okay. Next thing I know, this tremendous shock, and I'm back in my body, and I awaken, and it's about, now it's about a half an hour that I had been out. And I'm surrounded by my wife and the uh, and our friends and and the uh, 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 the paramedics from the they were there, and I said, "I'm fine. Let me get up." Oh no, no, no! You 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 have been out for uh, you know a half an hour, and I uh, this is really serious. So they convinced me to go to the hospital, and uh, they. Uh, the doctor said to me, uh, count backwards by sevens from 100, and I said, 93, 80. I said, I can't do that when I'm sober, you know. <laughs> Very funny. But the fact, the fact is that I had the experience of having left my body, and it became abundantly clear to me that who I am is not that body. Who I am had left that body who I am, so it, it kind of gave me an idea that, th that this is really true. You know, it isn't just believing it's true, but this is having had the experience. I, I didn't go any further. I mean, I perhaps I, yeah, it would have been a good idea to go further and then come back, but I didn't. And, but I'm convinced, I'm convinced that this spirit survives the body. And that was very, very helpful. And then I've carried that around with me all these years. And then suddenly I, ru I run into this spiritist group five months ago. And, and these people are, are, are so convinced, probably through experience. And, uh, and I learned so much about it. I learned what a medium is. And I'm not a medium. I may be channeling my, uh, my wizard of is, but I don't... Uh, I, I'm just not that sensitive. But there was one here, <laughs> this guy, Nemo. 
he did a, he did a reading on me that absolutely blew me away, and it, it, it just deepened my uh, experience of spiritism. So the spiritism is a little different than spiritualism. But again, experience far exceeds belief. And to have an experience far exceeds belief. Does this answer your question? Beautiful, beautifully, yes. On emotional transmutation, hermetic wisdom. Oh, hermetic wisdom. There's How do we fit in emotional transmutation, hermetic wisdom, in the spiritist philosophy? Okay. Last week, Yonara gave a beautiful explanation of spiritism, and she, uh, she, she spoke a good deal about emotion as being very, very important to be in touch with your emotions. However, she fell, uh, I shouldn't say she fell short, she just didn't explain how your emotions can be transmuted so that they become helpful in, uh, in uh, reaching your goals, okay? Now, emotions also are on a scale, like you were talking about just now. They, they range, well, I say they range from the high is love and the low is fear. And our emotions run just like that. Now, do the emotions do the emotions cause the uh, effect? Now, in, in Hermetic Wisdom, they talk about one of the seven principles is cause and effect. For every cause, there is an effect. And for every effect, there is a cause. Now, the things that happen to us, we, I mean, every picture says, well, that's why I feel good when good things happen, and I feel bad when bad things happen. But my own experience at this point in my life is that my emotions go up and down with, has nothing to do with what's going on outside. It has nothing to do with winning. It's not, it has nothing to do with losing. It has nothing to do with... It's, they just do. It's, it's like, which is another hermetic uh, principle that uh, everything that goes up must come down. You know, it sounds very, very simple, but it's true that, the, that this, this constant movement takes place, and it takes place in our emotions also. There have been many times when it's, I, I had wonderful experiences, and I went to sleep that night, and I was just, just like, like <laughs> I think I had given a lecture, and uh, I, I, I got a standing ovation after it. And... I was just so high that it was impossible. The next morning, man, I was ready to kill myself. I was that so down in the dumps, and I had no reason. Everything was going great. What? What? Why does it go up and why does it go down? It just does it normally. This is our life. We go up, we go down. Okay, but if we're down, how do we? How do we? continue to go down or does it go up by itself or can we control these emotions because if the emotions are the cause and what happens is the effect that's very important because this gives us a way to handle this life I mean the <laughs> if you can go from uh, depression you know up to ecstasy you know it's it's a scale now it, it can just happen haphazardly. They seem to be related to each other, the, the events that take place. Are they caused by the emotion, or does the emotion cause, or does the event cause the emotion? Well, I backed that up for me, and I, I, I mean, I, this has been going on for a very long time to me now, that if we can change our emotions, transmute, transform our emotions, while we're really down, sad, crying, really, really in bad shape, and how do you get out of it? Well, we can do that. We have the ability to do that, and it's one of the techniques of mindful meditation that I'm going to be discussing perhaps this evening too. 
that there, it is entirely possible to... Uh, let me back up just a little bit. The difference between our spiritual life and our material life, very, very important. Okay? When we can go, uh, we, we're so involved with our material life that we totally lose contact with our spirit. And this does happen. It happens to all of us. When you can get into your spiritual life and leave your material life, that, that's great. That's also on a scale. It's on a scale of consciousness. When you are in a very low emotional state, man, you're going to make some bad decisions. You're going to cause terrible things to happen. And uh, so if we can raise our emotion, then we get into a higher consciousness state. And we get it, if we can get that emotion up to a level of love, well, that's great. Well, how do you do that? See? This is, I asked the wizard. And he told me. He says, you won't find me when your emotions are low. You can find me when you're in love. Well, how do you fall in love when terrible things are happening? I mean, my sweetheart just left me, you know. How can I be in love when she just left me? Oh, he just left me. The mind, is, the mind is a very, very peculiar thing. Actually, we have two minds. There's one up in here, and there's one down here. There are two minds. The one up here is involved with material things. The one up here is rational, finding causes, means, you know, so uh, I can change it, you know, I can make more money and then I'll be happy. You make the more money and you're still not happy. But you can move from your head to your heart by simply, and this is really simply, asking a question. And this is one of my, mind, my mindful meditation techniques. Ask yourself a question when you're really down. How does it feel to be in love? Your heart knows the answer. Okay? You're now moving from here to here. And you don't even wait for the answer. The answer appears as quickly as on your very next breath. The mind will always answer questions. Okay? The mind does that. That's one of the things that the mind does. It answers questions. Anytime you put a question, it may not know the answer. And it'll tell you, I don't know the answer to that. But the mind, the spirit has a mind of its own. And that spirit, that Holy Spirit lives in our heart. It is there. And when you, you just ask the question of that mind that's there, the mind that's there is different than the mind that is up here. The mind that's there, all of its thoughts are thoughts of love. All of its thoughts are thoughts of, uh, well, let, let's put it this way. Your conscience is the thoughts of this spiritual mind. It's just there, and the answers are always there. Sometimes there's a dilemma, you know, oh, if I do this, it's good for me, but it's terrible for the other guy. You know, I say my conscience starts to bother me. But the point is that you listen to your conscience, that intuition Intuition is another wonderful word. It means inner teaching. It is there. And your teacher is sitting in here. Your teacher is that wizard of is. That wizard of is is inside of me. The wizard of is is inside of you. That, that spirit that's inside of you, make it your friend. That is your friend, your only true friend who wants everything for you, nothing from you. And this is a true friend. And that's the wizard of is. It's who I want to be. That's my Holy Spirit. The spirit that keeps reincarnating because it's impure and you try to, and each, each uh, incarnation, it becomes better. Each incarnation, 
It is a purifying experience. You ask, well, what is the purpose of life? That is the purpose of life, to have that spirit become purer. And when you're in the company of a highly, of a really pure spirit, you know something? It's contagious. It works. It works. And there, there are, there are, there are always pure spirits at, 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 in every age. It's not just one. You know that. I mean, if you, and if you're fortunate enough to have one of them as your teacher, you know, and be in their company, it's contagious. It's like a contagious wellness. I had that experience. Guru Maharaji is the one who gave me the knowledge. I don't follow him anymore, because why? <laughs> I know who he is, he knows who I am, and we are both the same one. I mean, that, that potential that's inside of me, well, it, it, it exudes. He can, he can stand up in front of you here. Perhaps I can do that too. I don't believe it, but maybe you're feeling that love from me. Well, you're not feeling it from me. You're feeling it from that, that Holy Spirit that's inside of me. It is so powerful. It is so powerful. It fills the room. What is it like to be in love? It makes, I mean, I, there aren't words to describe it. It's like being in another dimension. All these other things are happening. But when you're in that dimension called love, where you have elevated to that position, and we can all do it, in, in the Hermetic Wisdom, again, I'm, I'm going to give another lecture on Hermetic Wisdom, but yes, you can do that. You can change your emotion. You are really, you have the ability. God get, and what it takes to do that is two things. One is choice. We've also been given a choice. But choice, unless it has the willpower behind it is not going to happen. Your choice says, well, I want to be happy. I want to be in love. If you want it, you can't have it because anything that you want, you don't have. It's in the future. So when you want something, it keeps it in the future. But when you have the willpower to, you can, your choice becomes uh, what is it's already happened okay there's no future it's it's the choice that you when it's when it's when the choice is accompanied by that willpower willpower the greatest power in the universe when you have your real choice powered by your willpower you already have it so when you say what's it like to be in love. What's it like to be at peace? What's it like to be truly happy? And you, you're saying this when you're really, when you're really down and out. I mean, you're going down to a point where uh, go beyond depression. You, you you become suicidal, and it can happen. We all have these crazy things, these crazy moods. But to be able to manage your moods, to be able to let your, <laughs> let your spirit be who you are. He is anyway. But to find that out and to experience that, this is what this life is about, to purify that spirit that you are. And when actually, we're all one. We all have that Holy Spirit. But, you know, I, I, I listened to uh, uh, Luigi giving a, a lecture one, one, one week, and he was describing to us neophytes just what, who we are. You know? So he has the body, this material thing. And he said, but inside the body, there is a, well, there's certainly a mind that controls the body. And uh, if you speed up the vibration, and you can do that. You speed up the vibration, you get closer to something called your soul. And he describes that soul as being your spirit plus your perispirit, this, this stuff that's around it, 
Well, we're not in contact with that. We know where our bodies. You know, say, who am I? What do you mean, who am I? I mean, hey, 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 you see me? No, 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 no. That's your temporary garment that you're wearing. But that spirit that's inside of you is who you are. But actually, you're all three things. But when the time comes to lay down the body because it has lost its usefulness, okay, where it's not improving anything, it's not carrying out its function of purifying your spirit by the things that you do and the things that you think. Yeah, that's temporary. Our bodies are temporary, but that spirit goes on. And that, that experience I, I described to you with having my spirit left my body, and I knew it was me. And I knew that I really knew I experienced that. Nobody can tell me I didn't experience it. And just as a skeptic, you know, he's filled with doubts. That Those doubts stand between your spirit and your material self. <coughs> Doubt is something to, I mean, people say it's good to have doubts. You know, that's how you learn things. You know? Well, I mean, it's good to have doubts, but the point is you can't be uh, 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 so, 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 and the doubts are very powerful. When somebody says, I doubt that. I doubt if there, if there is a God. I doubt if I have a spirit. He's really saying, I don't believe that. I, I, I you know, and it's, uh, don't bother me with that. You can't prove it. Prove it to me. You know? Well, as only Kardec says, <laughs> I'm not going to bother proving it to you. When you experience it, you'll know it. And the, 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 the no amount of proof is necessary until you've had the experience. So if you want to know about spiritism, you know, I, I, can't, I can't tell you what it is so that you would believe it. You have to experience it. And it takes some work. You know, check it out. Read the books. And there are plenty of them around right now. I'm, I've been enjoying the, the whole trip right now. This and Broward Spiritist Society is, is, is really my home. I, I, I just love this place, and the people in it are just, just amazing. Any more questions? Let's see one more. So on emotional magic, emotions are the cause. Levels of consciousness are the effect. How do you achieve levels of consciousness based on emotions? Well, if you, if you accept what I'm saying, if you accept that what I'm saying is the truth, emotions and consciousness seem to go hand in hand. But one is the cause, the other is the effect. And if I'm really happy, if, I, if my emotional state is really happy, my level of consciousness comes up to a point where I start making very good decisions. So it's not, uh, and good things start to happen. So my life is about, right now, my life is about raising my emotions. My level of consciousness follows automatically because I really and truly experience that. And I hope that you check it out yourself. In fact, you can do it right now. Let's talk about meditation, okay? Meditation, everybody, right now they talk about mindful meditation. Okay, but again, remember what I said. There are two minds. There's one up here and there's one down here. Mindful meditation, so you're going to fill up your mind with the thoughts that are up here. You know, this is, this is not a very good idea. This is not meditation as I, as, it's not... The, what I mean by mindful meditation is asking yourself when I say, who am I? Am I that body? What am I? Am I a spirit? I guess in The Course in Miracles, it, there, there's a quote, uh, 
I am, I am spirit, I am free, I am as God created me. This is who I am. Yeah. And if you can get rid of the doubts through experience, this is great. And it can be done. One of the most powerful methods that I have, I, ha I, have, I have a dozen or more ways of starting mindful meditation, but my favorite one, I do it every day, my favorite one is the first commandment. You know what the first commandment is? I am the Lord thy God, and thou shalt have no other gods before me. That being that I am, that spirit that I am, that pure spirit that I am, is connected, is connected. When, when Jesus said, I and the Father are one, he was connected. And you are connected when you become one with that Holy Spirit that's inside of you, that pure spirit. No, it's there. It's there. Are we finished? We have a couple of minutes. Hmm. Give me another question. Okay, the last one. Let's see. Uh, on fear of death, spiritualism versus the spiritism. Fear of death is spiritualism versus the spiritism. What is the difference? Okay. Look at me. What do you see? Here's a 92-year-old man this year. I am a lot closer to not being here than all of you. <laughs> and don't, put, don't, don't for, let me fool you for a moment. The fear of death is very real, and it does pull you down. It's, all, it's like all other fears are connected to that somehow. But we put that aside when we're young and beautiful like you. Okay. But that fear is there. Spiritualist that I am, experienced as I am, until I have experienced that my body and my spirit go on after death. When you realize, I mean realize, not, not just suppose or not perhaps, but realize the truth that this body is immortal. Not this body is immortal, this spirit is immortal. And that spirit is who I am. It is what I am. I, don't, I, can't, I can't explain it to, to make the scientists believe me. But once you have experienced it, perhaps you can have a near-death experience, I don't know. Uh, others, uh, because they're around people like Mimo, you know, and they become absolutely, they experience someone who, <laughs> who knows about spirits, a medium. That, uh, very, very important. So the fear of death, what has the spiritist group done for me? It's eliminated the fear of death. How lucky can I be? Okay? Not only that, because, because I feel so great, I may go on and, you know, this body may become immortal. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, but spiritualism, yes, I've had that. But spiritism is a step up from there on the scale of knowledge. Knowledge. Talking about the knowledge you don't get in college. <laughs> this is the knowledge of the truth. The truth that knows no lie. The truth of who you are. And have that friend, that Holy Spirit is your friend. Am I the Wizard of Is? Not yet. Not yet, but he's inside of me, and he takes care of me, and he's inside of you, and you, and you, he's there. He's inside of all of us, and that's what makes us one. And can we get there? 
every day of my life. Can I stay there? Hopefully one day. But according to hermetic wisdom, whatever goes up must come down. And I get up to that place every day, and I fall down. It's OK. It's OK. It's the way it's supposed to be. Any other questions? Are we finished? We are. Uh, let me see if you have another one. Oh, you already spoke about that, but let me see. Spiritism is belief. Oh, the last one is the mindfulness meditation techniques, but you already spoke about them. Unless yes, you yes, want to. Yes, yes. So I, that's I, the last I, one. I would, uh, I so would have to reserve that for another Okay. Talk, okay. So, can you share with us the, your mindfulness meditation technique, like the, your favorite one? My favorite one is the first commandment. I, you know, it doesn't, you know, the commandments, I know the Ten Commandments, I know them backwards and forwards. Of course, I'm a rabbi, okay? <laughs> but that first commandment, it, it's not like, uh, uh, don't do this, don't do that. It's not like prohibitions. It's a statement, and it's a statement not that God is saying to me, I am the Lord thy God, and thou shalt have no other gods before. You're repeating it. Repeat that. And that I am, the God that I am, is the God that you are. That Holy Spirit is the God that you are. And when you say the first commandment, I am the Lord thy God, something amazing happens. That's my favorite technique. Works but much better for me than guided meditation where I go to a, uh, try to get out of my mind and it works. But this really works for me, for me. Right. Try them all, but this one works for me. Now well, before I close, I just want to uh, close this talk by saying Eric Fromm was a great uh, psychiatrist, psychologist, and he wrote a wonderful book. Oh, this goes back 50 years ago. These are, these are people I knew then. And he said that in order to love man, you've got to love yourself. And. Uh, the one who wrote I Am Thou, Martin Buber, he says, in order to love God, you have to love man. And the Wizard of Is says, if you don't love yourself, then may God help you. Thank you so much for once again sharing your your experience, your your thoughts with us, Stanley. It's, it's great to have you here. Have, wonderful to have you in our community. Thank you so much. Um, we're gonna have uh, the second part of our activities, which are the passes. If you are here for the first time, anyone here? No. So you all know what happens. Maybe Janet, you first time you're here, right? Oh, okay. All right. So I'm going to give you um, some uh, reminders first before we go to the passes. And if you have water and b water bottles, please uh, place them over there so uh, so they would take in a, in a chamber to give passes. So next week we're going to have Edo Pontes here, uh, Spiritism, talking about spiritism in our daily lives. It's going to be on Wednesday, April 19th at 8.15. You are all invited to come. And we have some exciting news. So we are having here on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. meditation. It's called meditation bathing. It's like, you know. So there is not one technique, but... Uh, Come here, we are starting from zero, and we are introducing uh, meditation, so you don't have to have experience in meditation. Just come, 
Don't be afraid. We don't bite. Some might do, but promise we don't bite. We will be gentle with you. And bring your pillow. It's important that you are comfortable. And please join us. It's in English, so no excuses, right? And uh, so, yeah, bring a pillow, your uh, meditation chair, or you can use one of those chairs that you are uh, sitting at right now. So please come every Tuesday from 7 to 7.45 and spread the word. Maybe you know someone. We hear a lot of people say, oh, I want to quiet my mind. I want inner balance. Come here on Tuesday. It's, it's free. Come on. Okay? Please join us. If you have questions, you can always talk to us after this, okay? And on Tuesday at 8 p.m., so an hour later, we have our meetings. So we are talking about the nature of the spirits, uh, life after death. We're talking about inhabited words, worlds. Right now, we started, we are just warming up with the book, What is the Spiritism? Where Kardec is... Um, uh, uh, published the book when he, where he had a dialogue with a, a critic, a skeptic, and a, a priest. So we are on a second chapter on the skeptic, and it's very interesting. That's why Stanley was mentioning a, a lot about that, because it's a very interesting uh, chat group. It's a study group, so what we do, we read the chapter and we have a little um, WhatsApp group. I send the link, we read the chapter, and on uh, Tuesday at 8, we just discuss of uh, what the highlights or the points that are more, most interesting for each one of us. So we are all there. There's people here. So Stanley, Steve, who else is, is here? There's Donna, which is not here, and Reggie, and Manny. The new guy is Manny. His name is Manny. And we love this place, and we love that we are open here almost every day, six days a week. And we are open to everyone who is looking for answers, who are looking for consolation, or at least to receive a support, or come here and have the magnetic passes, looking for healing to, in addition to whatever treatment they are having. And we would like to continue this work and we want to be open keep for this community. It's very important for us and we love this place. So I, I ask you to, whenever you can, please donate. And we have different activities in the house that you can donate and you can be part, take on the activities and participate with us. There are many ways that you can um, donate and anything is welcome just so you know um, on and this is one of the the sources for us here uh, every third Saturday of the month we have the garage sale and we always want volunteers so if you would like to um, come here and help us uh, the next one will be on Saturday April 15th so from 6 a.m to 1 p.m. This is on a Saturday. But we, we have a little work. If you can't come and you can give like um, uh, your volunteer help on Saturday, you can come on Friday night after 6 p.m. We use this room here to sort out the items that we receive. If you have any item at home that you're not using and it's in good condition, please donate to the centers because we we convert that we sell and then we we keep the money to pay the bill the electricity and the uh, and the facility and we want volunteers please contact us on Lucia, which is here cutting it's there too roberta and sarah okay just just Ana Lucia and karen talk to us you'll be very welcome it's it's a fun environment i'm part of that too and another way to help us is using, if you shop online with Amazon, you go to smile.amazon.com and Amazon will ask you to select an institution of your choice. And, and then everything, you, there is no cost for you. So everything you buy online, a tiny fraction come to us, but everything is welcome and we love to have that source too. So I invite you to do that for us. Actually, I do that too. 
and that was it. So I'm gonna invite the magnetists that are going to the passes chamber, please. And I invite you to do a little, very short prayer so we can prepare our spirit, prepare our mind to receive the benefits of magnetism and magnetic passes. Let's take just a, a few seconds. To